this is, uh, at least according to L. Ron Hubbard's own words, uh, and I quote, the head of the Galactic Confederation, 76 planets around larger stars fizzle from here. I can stop you. Okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay. I'm familiar with the material. I think what you're getting at is, is that uh, the confidential scriptures of the church yes. or information that, uh, that is purportedly not open or isn't available or these kinds of things. There are absolutely confidential scriptures in the Church of Scientology. There are. Always have been. There always will be. They comprise less than 1% of the entirety of Dianetics and Scientology. The existence of esoteric or, or, uh, or for lack of a better term, confidential materials in any religious uh, belief is very common. From the Vatican archives to the more esoteric uh, writings and studies that one would engage in in Judaism or in Mormonism. This is about the fundamentals. And in the practice, of your, of, this is not about the fundamentals of your belief, though. This, well, this the thing, comes into the sense here's of the, the, thing, here's of the, the thing. soul. Right. For you to talk to me, you as someone who's not a Scientologist, to talk to me about what my beliefs are, or to ask me to explain any core religious belief. It, it, that's an offensive concept. Nobody should ever be asked to do that. Nobody does that because what you have which is very common in many religions. And, and see, this isn't a matter of, of church policy or what the church believes. This is a matter of the individual beliefs of Scientologists. Like practicing Scientologists know that they're engaged in a spiritual progression. And as they, as they move through that spiritual progression and achieve higher and higher states of awareness, they will get to points in their religious studies where they will study some of the confidential scriptures of the Church of Scientology. Anyone can arrive to that point through the proper progression of the study of Dianetics and Scientology. And people do do that. They do it all the time, every day. And, uh, and that is part of the core practice of Scientology. And for anyone to be asked to explain the more esoteric or the more advanced concepts and, 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 and ideas of Scientology to a non-believer is something that we'll never do. Well, that would be as if like the book, but because wouldn't that be as if... Because what you, with the phenomena that occurs on the internet in particular and with apostates uh, and, and people who, uh, who, who have left the church and now seek to destroy it or criticize it is a twisting and a ridicule and a denigrating of the religious beliefs of, of Scientologists. And that's just something that really, it's bigoted, it's discriminatory, it's hateful, it's harmful and it's uh, it's disrespectful to to anybody's religious beliefs. And like I said, nobody should be asked to explain it. And the thing is, is, is that detractors of the church know full well that it violates Scientologists' religious beliefs to discuss the esoteric or upper level materials of Dianetics and Scientology. They feed it to the media with the intent that the media will try and embarrass or put on the spot or ask Scientologists to explain their religious beliefs, but really in doing so compromise sacredly held beliefs, religious beliefs. And so if you want to talk about the words or the stories or the information that's on the internet to a Scientologist, because of what you were found or what you were directed to or what you went and found on the internet is to fall into the trap of hate that is forwarded by these types of people because the intent is to put, for example, say me as a Scientologist, just aside from my, aside from my position as a, a spokesperson for the church, yeah. I am a Scientologist. This is my religion. I do practice it. And it violates my religious beliefs to discuss what is or isn't um, the esoteric or upper level materials of Dianetics and Scientology. It violates my beliefs to engage in a debate on it and I have no obligation to do so. I've never done it and I never will. I just won't. And, and is that the, the reasoning for the cease and desist letters for just about everybody who has published these works, the esoteric works from Sunshine Press to uh, Google, I believe, has also been given cease and desist letters by uh, Moxon and Coburn. Mm -hmm. That's the reasoning behind it. Uh, Absolutely. Okay. We have every right to defend our religious beliefs. We have every right to protect our materials and our scriptures and practice our other religion the way that that we see fit as individual Scientologists. Like literally we could go to a church and talk to individual Scientologists, Scientologists who have studied the upper levels or Scientologists who are on their way to studying the more 
uh, esoteric materials in Scientology or the upper levels of Scientology. And they will tell you, if you took this book that you have here, which purportedly contains what has been stated to be upper level materials of Scientology, and tried to show it to a Scientologist and insist that he read it, he wouldn't want to. He'd tell you just like I would. I, I wouldn't want to read it. I wouldn't be interested in it. Because you know what? I'm not interested in somebody else's version of my religion or somebody else's idea of what my religion is. Or something that somebody stole from the church that is legitimately church materials and is trying to show it to me for the only intent of knowingly violating my religious beliefs and knowingly violating what it is that how it is that I see fit to practice my religion. But arguably isn't the reason why they are potentially wouldn't want to read it is because the book themselves uh, the book itself says that if you read it out of out of order in effect quote unquote freewheeling according to one of the pages that uh, physical harm will come of you. I believe it mentions pneumonia. Uh, is there is an actual fear, a physical fear? Arguably, there is a physical cause and effect that saying that if you read this uh, before you're ready for it, then physical harm will come of you. I've you know I've read, though arguably not understood, uh, much of OTs three through six. Mm -hmm. uh, according to this, as I read it, I should have had some sort of kill switch turn on me, and I should have died of pneumonia. Why am I not dead yet? I, 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 here we're going to the basic fundamental point that I'm trying to make, okay? What you're doing right now, and what it is that you're saying to me, is an intent to ridicule religious beliefs. That's really what we're talking about. And, uh, and you're just forwarding an agenda of, uh, of hate by people who, for whatever reasons, trying to understand bigotry, trying to understand hate, I mean, it's something man's been trying to understand for eons. Um, it's illogical to the degree that it occurs, and it can be, and it can occur so viciously. The fact of the matter is, is no member of any faith should ever be asked or required to explain to non-believers their religious beliefs. And anyone who insists that they do, anyone who insists that they interpret it or otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Even in the position that you put me in now where you're there, you're holding something, you're reading it, you're telling me what it says, you're telling me what it's about. The whole point I'm trying to make is, is that I, as a Scientologist, let alone as someone who has worked for the church for half my life, I refuse to even engage in the debate because there is no debate. My religious beliefs are my religious beliefs. I'm not going to explain whether what you think they are are my religious beliefs or aren't because they're mine. They're mine to interpret. They're mine to understand. It's my choice to progress in Scientology to the degree that I choose. It's an individual Scientologist's choice to progress in Scientology as they see fit and to do what they want to do and learn what they want to learn and take what they want to take. One of the things Owen Hubbard said is, is, is <clears throat> and he defined personal integrity this way, is that what's true for you is what you yourself observe to be true. In other words, it's only true if you yourself observe it to be true, and that's integrity. In other words, it's true based on your own observation. So it's not true because I say so. It's not true um, because it's written in, in, in a book by L. Ron Hubbard. It's true to the degree that you read it and you find it's applicable to your life. It's true to the degree that you read it and you go out and you see, wow, you know, that actually is the case. I've experienced in that. I've experienced that. I've observed that. It's helped me, whatever it may be. That, that's how Owen Hubbard himself de described integrity. So the progress of individual Scientologists in Dianetics and Scientology is a path of integrity. It's a path of discovery. And it's a path that the person travels of their own free will and of their own accord and takes from it what they wish to, to apply to their life and, and make themselves happier. And, and on that subject, you know, the fact of the matter is there's millions of Scientologists the world over. They're happy because of it. They tell other people about it. 7,700 churches, missions, and groups in 164 countries. The church has grown more in the last year than the last five years combined, more in the last five years than the last five decades combined. More people walked into a church of Scientology for the first time in the last year than ever in our history. So people are clearly interested. People are clearly talking about it. And people who want to know, they should get a book by Owen Hubbard and read it. Find out for themselves. And on a personal level, what has been your most joyous member, or joyous moment as a member of Scientology, a moment of personal revelation in your personal life that has been a, a moment of great joy. If you can explain that, describe that moment. Um, well, I've been a Scientologist for most of my life, and 
And I decided many 